Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hey, Danielle. It's too hot to go outside. Otherwise, you would have missed this. Yes. Yes. It is hot here today, but not nearly as hot as yesterday. And the crowd goes wild. Yes. Ooh, I should I should add some like applause and some great sound effects to the trailer, huh? Hey, Michelle, how are you doing today? How bad did it get over at your place yesterday? We hit 103 here. I imagine you must have got a little hotter. And Danielle, yeah, it must be really beastly hot where you are. Ugh. Hey, Anne, happy to have you here today. Taking a break from working. <coughs> my allergies, I've got sinus stuff draining down my throat. So hopefully I won't have a gazillion sneezes like I did. My, my face is all red because I just had a whole bunch of sneezes. Made the dog crazy. 104 for you yesterday. Okay. Not a lot hotter, but it's supposed to be a little cooler today. Although I just saw a notification that um, we have uh, the potential for, not a big one, but potential for thunderstorms and dry lightning later today. So fire season is officially here. You're sort of here. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Paul. <coughs> Danielle says we are a cool 98, but back up to 100 tomorrow. Oh, it's just crazy. Just crazy. Hey, Allison, you are doing it right. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm so tickled to have you here. Hey, Sue, hugs to you. Super big hugs to you. I know last week was hard for you. Let's see if I can switch my cameras around. There we go. I got a mess. Yeah, allergies, just little. <clears throat> yeah, make sure you're in live chat. Thanks for that reminder to um, anybody, Allison and everybody. Make sure you are in live chat at the top of the chat thing and not um, top chat because you'll miss things. Hey, Susan, how are you doing? I'm doing some block breaking today. That's the idea, block breaking, because a lot of you saw my post um, where I'm just, I'm just moving stuff around. Gail, hello, Gail. Happy to have you joining us here. Yeah, you know, and Nicola. Nicola. Nicola? I do it every time, huh? Yeah, it's just, um, I went to my scrap pile, and all I did was iron the really big stuff, and I'm not even worrying about the threads or anything. I've got a piece of felt. Oh, let's see. How big is this? It's just because I found um, at Goodwill a few years ago this huge bolt of green felt. And I figured you can always use felt. So this is about 16. It's about 13 by 16. There was no um, reasoning for what I did. I just cut off a chunk that I felt like I could work with on camera. Um, I have another project that I think I'll do with the rest of the browns, a larger one, but it's just too hard to work on camera. I'll wait until I get to the lower stuff. Hey, Kathy. No customers yet. So the idea is just to make a base cloth, okay? Yeah, I love the greens too, but I'll, you guys see me working greens all the time, so I figured I would have browns and I could go kind of grungy, is <clears throat> to think about creating a base cloth that then I could embroider on. And what's really hard on that is to not think about how stuff is going to go together because this is just like a first layer. And so it's sort of like a snippet roll. You know, if you're doing a snippet roll and you've got something that's just a couple inches wide and you're just piling it all over, um, it's the same idea, except working larger, then you can either make this a journal cover or you can make it a wall hanging or you can cut it apart or do something else. So I'm going to just start. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. You could totally um, get some of the sticky uh heat and bond that kind of stuff and just stick it down like that but i decided i'm just i can do this easily with a glue stick and i like that because i can move it around easily and there is no rhyme or reason hey sandy are your eyes all back to normal for you and you can join us you haven't been able to be here for a while so happy to have you here and hopefully seeing much better Collage with fabric, exactly. But the idea is not to, I'm not trying to make something yet. 
I'm going to get to this level, you know, get it all down, stitch down, and then I'm going to do some stuff to it, and then I will keep going it. You can see that's all. like making a fabric master board. That's another good way of looking at it. Yes, I have way more fabric than I need, which is fine because this other piece is like four feet. <laughs> And this, you know, you can decide, however, um, I've done these before where I've used patterns and you could totally do that, but I don't want to use patterns on this one because I, I have like a really rough idea. Hey, Barbara, happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, this would work, but it's more brown on the other side. So I'm just going to kind of see, let's see, I need to give myself some more room. And then it's a nice way, you know, if you have like little scraps that you can put on afterwards um my thought is you know i'm gonna make my big thing and then i'm gonna do some stuff to it with some inks or paints or sprays or all of the above and then i will keep adding to it and building it up but right now what we want <clears throat> what i want is texture <clears throat> let's see uh, hey carol how are you doing today Michelle, all the love labels are here. Hi, Sharon. Good, good early morning to you. What time is it? Oh, dark 30 in Australia. So I'm, and I don't know if I want to go super light. And I kind of was thinking maybe if I did tonal. Hey, Tunder, you will be back soon. Oh, good. I haven't seen you in ages. Mwah. Loves to you. Carol's melting. <laughs> so how hot is it for you, Carol? And see, I've got threads and stuff all over here. I'm not going to worry about it. By the time stuff gets stitched down, I'm either going to see it or not. I'm going to go on this, this one. I'm going to go a little bit over the edge, I think. Because, you know, I don't, and I don't know if I want the red in there. All right. So let's see. 5 a.m. Oh, you are such a good friend. Thank you. Now, one thought I have is, are my pieces too big? Will it be more interesting? Whoops. Let me pull you back a little bit, huh? Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, Susan wasn't set up very well, was she? Okay, I'm working here. So I'm wondering if my pieces are too big and if it would be more interesting. But let's just, you know, let's just start laying some stuff down i didn't really do a whole long hey angie and i know i said i was going to do um gel printing on fabric today but if you saw my video uh in the group or on instagram or on TikTok, um you know i've been struggling with a lot of blockage and it's very frustrating To quote Robin Williams, hot damn, I'm hot. Yep, hot damn hot. That's bad. Do you know I share a birthday with Robin Williams? Robin Williams and Ernest Hemingway. That explains so much about me. <laughs> Southern Ontario, so not, not ready for all that heat, huh? All right, so, hmm. I don't know. I was thinking I would go. Yeah, creative block. It's it's real. It's so real. All right. I'm not. See, I'm already not loving this. Hey, Fiona, you were watering the salads in the containers. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'm going to cut this one down a little bit. What I like about doing um, this sort of a of a master cloth, I guess we'll call it, <laughs> is you don't have to worry if you've taken apart old clothes, you've got the seams and things in them. It's all going to add texture. And the texture is going to make the stitching much more interesting. All right, let's just see. Let's see what I have. I don't think I put out a lot of duplicates, although I'm thinking now <clears throat> some of these pieces, they're just so big. No one is ready for that much heat. I couldn't live there anymore. It's one of the reasons I moved to Eureka, the Northwest California coast, sea breezes most days. Ah, yeah. 
Well, we had 103, and I do not want any of the <clears throat> dry lightning to get in our way. Let's see. Uh, okay, while I'm laying this out, I'm going to pull you way back just so you can see more. This is, wow, interesting. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not liking that with it, so let's just eliminate some things. That'll help. Yeah, I'm thinking... The stuff that's too red isn't going to work for me. That one's still kind of red. Whoa, and I didn't, I, you guys hear me okay? I didn't even think to remember to check to bring my microphone over more. Let's see. It's not quite so red. And I could do the lighter. Hmm. 72. Oh my goodness. That sounds marvelous. I don't do the heat as well as I used to when I was a kid. When I was younger, I was fine with the heat. Okay. That's got some glue on the other side. So sound is okay. Good. Huh? All right. Let's just figure out what we're going to use and then have that one on there. Maybe one of the skinnier ones of that would be better. This feels more gray. Maybe I'll use these on the bigger one. And I'm starting to think this is a little too red, but we might need it. 91 in Pennsylvania for Kathy. Wow. Corduroy. Okay. Corduroy makes me think about high school. Corduroy pants. That was a big thing. Bell bottom corduroy pants. All right. <clears throat> hmm. Gail says it's about what it is here too. Barbara, Lake Michigan gives me some breeze some days. It's been overcast too, so that helped. Much warmer today over in Chicago. Sue says, as a kid, I looked forward to the warm summer months. Now I produce so much of my own heat, I dread the months ahead. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. And my poor husband does not, of course, you know, I said, you can have my hormones anytime you want them, but he doesn't have to deal with it. So we have, um, we have fun times trying to keep each of us comfortable. <laughs> I'm going to be 64 next month. So uh, I've been really lucky. I've not had a whole lot of menopausal stuff, I think, because of some stuff that I had done when I was younger. All right. This looks like my color palette. And it's definitely more than I need here. But I'm thinking the big pieces are just too big. They're not nearly as interesting. It's like using half a piece of scrapbook paper on a master board. So... You'll be 64 in July. That's right. We're very close, right, Susan? All right. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. And you got to start somewhere, right? You just have to start somewhere. You got a couple years on me? Okay. <laughs> ah. Fiona, I totally agree. We've got four lettuces, three spinaches, a cilantro out there, and an earth box. Very happy plants, and I love picking a handful of leaves for dinner. Yes, Gail, I've been thinking about that, too. I'm going to be singing it in my horrible voice to my husband for the next few weeks. Yeah, small is good. Oh, you're 66 and a half. Okay. Yeah, we've got um, a lot of people, I think, in, in that age group. No hot flashes. I have heat waves. Been over a year now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and Barbara's... Barbara's the uh, matriarch of the group here. She's got 15 years on us. Oh, Paul, absolutely. She He said, would it be okay if I post my website link in here? I took a lot of suggestions from professional website builders, and this is what I have now. Absolutely, Paul, post it. Um, and then uh, one of it, maybe, um, Barbara, If with, when Paul posts the link, if you could you know, paste it back in there as an actual link for him. That would be super. Yeah, Angie, you and me both. Oh, there's Terry. Okay. So post the link, Paul, and Terry will grab it and get it in there as a hot link for people. Hello, Miss Terry. 
I'm thinking this might go after, but I think for right now. Yep. So this is the, okay. Maybe that's one of our nicknames, right? Is the, the 64. There is, um, there's a group. I don't remember if it's in the UK or it's in Ireland. Maybe somebody else knows um, 64 textiles or something like that because they all graduated from a school in 1964. Sharon said we should be growing lettuce here at the moment. The prices have skyrocketed so much they're joking about it on TV. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of stuff. The, the prices have just gone crazy. And, of course, you know, gasoline. All right, let's... And normally I would want um, lots of frayed edges, but here's the thing, okay? If you're going to do something like this and you want the frayed edges, cut all your pieces. Hey, Dixie Doodles, haven't seen you in ages. Thanks for joining us. Cut all your pieces, throw them in a pillowcase or one of those laundry bags and throw them through the washing machine in the dryer a few times. And then they will, if they're going to fray, they're going to fray for you and you'll have that. All right. Uh, anything else that's big? Terry has quick fingers for getting those websites up there. And that is one of the, for those of you that are new, that is one of the bonuses for coming and hanging out with us is that you can, um, get some free promotion because Terry goes and finds your sites and shares them here. Diesel supposed to run out in a couple weeks. Wow. I had not heard that. Yikes. All right. I am not going to even, I, I was going to try and plan. And while I could do that, if I wasn't on camera, on camera, no, not going to happen. So um, I'm not going to worry about shredding anything. The other thing you could do is you could get it all stitched down with some basting stitches and then uh, throw it in the washing machine and the dryer. All right. And I'm just using a regular glue stick. I'm not using my fabric glue stick. And what's nice about this is if you just get it on a little bit and you decide you don't like it there, you can pull it right back off again. But if I get it to that point, then I can start stitching it down. And I'm just going to come off the edge just a little bit. Absolutely, Etsy shops count, Danielle. You post it, and Terry will add you to our list. You've got some lovely digitals in your Etsy shop that should be shared. All right, we're going to. It's about, <laughs> I already forgot. Let's see. It is about 14 by 13. It's very strange. Um, I just, I wasn't going to even think that hard. I was not going to think that hard. Because as you guys know, I've been thinking too hard and it's been stressing me out. Okay, I got a little bit of a funky edge, which I like. So many upholstery scraps I'm kind of trying to use up over time, too. Yeah, everything's sticking to my finger. Oh, good. Carol says, thank you, Terry. I'm making new friends. That's the whole thing here. I mean, the live streams here are all about community, building community, getting to know one another, um, learning some, some things outside of our norm. My brain hurts when I think too hard. Yeah, I hear that. I think because uh, I'm doing a whole lot of business growth things right now. No, I haven't seen Paul. Did Paul calling Paul. I know it's late for him. He's in South Africa. Um, I've been doing a lot of business growing, which is good, but it sort of messes with my mojo. So Paul will be back whenever and post it for us. Got to remember, you don't have to go in the straight signs. And, you know, you may not even recognize some of this when it all gets done. Paul is a beautiful photographer, and I just love his work. I met him years ago in my photography days. Ah. 
This is not worrying about it. We are not going to worry about any of this. Oh, it's so much easier, Angie, to do the basting like this. Um, and I've got, I've got a spray basting, which is nice, but I'm really not a fan of the aerosol. And uh, I was looking up, there's actually a recipe for making your own non aerosol basting spray with flour, water, something else. Um, but I'll probably, you know, I would have done the nori paste, but honestly, it's just, my brain was like, nope. Fiona says it's the left and right side of your brain in conflict. Absolutely. There is Anne's YouTube and check Anne out on Instagram where she has really been posting a lot of stuff. Danielle says, yes, it's hard for me to prioritize my Etsy, my creating my digi, slow switch projects. Yeah, it's, I think it's hard for most of us. If it's not hard for you, I envy you. All right, and I'm just kind of coming up to go over the edges. We're going to put some more. And what's, you know, I try to um, think ahead. What I was thinking about this is this maybe will be the project I work on for a while in the live, because if I don't think about what I'm going to do in the lives, I get all twisted around and I'll be working on something else. And then it's like, oh, it's Wednesday. I need to think about something for the lives. And, and then it throws me all off. Sharon says, I get that conflict a lot. Yep. Danielle says, in some ways it helps because when I get a block like you're having, I can walk away and do something completely different. Yeah. And that's kind of what I've been doing is I've been working on the business growth and then I wanted to go back to the art and it's like, okay, so maybe you're not ready to go back to the art. Maybe it's time to continue to work on, you know, growing the website and reaching out, you know, deciding how you're going to reach out more and, you know, doing things over on TikTok, which is an interesting experience. <laughs> Lori, oh my goodness, it has been ages since I have seen you. I am so happy to see you. Yes, I hope you're doing okay too. We have missed you. In my Etsy shop, I haven't added anything new in ages. I started to do something... Um, and then I was like, I just, I did the digi kit, the free giveaway, which if, if for some reason anybody wants free digis and they haven't gotten it yet, if you go over to my um, YouTube and look for the uh, 10,000 giveaway, there is a free digi kit you can download. Gail said, I decided to clean, totally clean and reorganize my art studio since I was having a block. Yep. Angie says, I just wanted to share my Etsy shop. I have printables in my shop. Great for collage, mixed media, art journaling, junk journaling, et cetera. Please share your shop, Angie, or well, Terry will share your shop. Hey, Mouse. How are you doing? Yeah. And we've, we've got glitchy weather coming, I hear. Glad to see you pop in. Fiona wants to know, did you find anything interesting when you were cleaning, Gail? <laughs> Yeah, and what I found is that I have so much paper that I've got to go back and make a bunch of journals to use up the paper. That's definitely something I have to do. So this is definitely, wow, my camera is so crooked. That's funny. The ugly stage. Let's see which way. Nope. Sorry for my hand in front of it, but that helps a little bit. Lori says she's doing well again. It's so glad to be back. Yes, I am. So that is, that is like my happy today. So happy to see you again. Sue says I've decided I need to do some reorganizing of supplies, not looking forward to it, honestly. Yeah, I was so thrilled to have an empty shelf pop up in my studio. I could not believe it. Um, Michelle says, cleaning helps with my motivation because I find new stuff to work on. Yeah, handling your materials, it always gets you kind of, you know, fired up to do something. 
Gail says, oh, yes. Oh, my God, the paper. Yep, lots of paper, lots of yarn, lots of fabric, and way too many pads of watercolor paper. But I found things I also forgot I bought. I have a lot of watercolor paper, too. And the watercolor um, cards, I have got to figure out what kind of cards I want to make to use up all that stuff. Angie says, I love the digital printables I got from you, Susan. I am so glad. I hope you're having fun with them. I want to see what you do. Mouse says, my workplace had a power outage due to a fire, so I'm just overall powerless. Oh, that stinks. That stinks. Gail's already finished two UFOs. Oh, my goodness. Sharon says, I was wondering about that just before bed last night, Sue, but that's a huge task. I do wonder if my studio is set up the best way it can be. It often feels like things just kind of fell into place. Yeah, I think we we tend to do some um, reorganizing of it all. It's almost got more of a green tint. I'm going to pull that one out. Um, you know, as we're working on things and we see what we need to do more of. Danielle says, I recently organized and I have four four boxes of yarn been trying to come up with things to do with all the extra yarn I'm not allowed to buy more until I use up a lot wrap sticks you can use up a lot wrapping sticks what else can Danielle use with long yarn and if it's yarn you don't like you can always use it to stuff things Lori says, hearing others are organizing encourages me. Yeah, Sharon's like only four, right? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six baskets hanging on the wall that hold my yarn. And then, you know, I've got a bookcase full of clear things that hold all my threads. That's completely different. Uh, something lighter can go over here. This is really, it, you really have to be okay with the fugly stage because boy, this is, <laughs> this is not pretty, but that's okay. Hopefully it will be when we're done. You have no choice but to work abstractly when you do something like this. So it kind of takes the pressure off when you're going to get ready to stitch, at least for me. Let's see. I like those threads showing. Weaving. Oh, yeah. Weaving use, uses up a lot. Danielle said I made those yarn bowls. Yeah. You know, I have had three looms warped for like six months and have not gotten back to them. I mean, they're not huge looms, so I should really, you know, get in there and work on some of that stuff. But all right, what are we going to do here? Kind of want to get to the end. Well, let's see. What if we go the other way? And we don't worry about getting to the edge of that. <clears throat> Looks like a partially finished jigsaw puzzle at the moment. Yeah. Make or buy a loom. Yeah, not too expensive. Lori says, I'm finding that in time I find new uses for materials I thought I would never use again. Part of the creative process. Yes. Yes. Sharon says, I see your four, probably five plus. Now I have mom's yarn as well. Hey, Joan. Late but here. Use yarn in your clusters. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon, we've talked about that before. How come you don't have one yet or have your talented hubby make you one? Even just a little pin loom. Danielle says, I have a yarn problem. If I like it, I will buy it and think a project will present itself. It didn't. But my daughter has a slew of friends having babies. So I went through and made about a dozen baby blankets, then scarves I donated. Do you crochet or knit? Hey, Dee Dee. She says, the paper wound on my McCumber loom between the threads is from 1978. That's a long time not to be weaving. Wow, I feel better then. I feel so much better. Thank you for sharing that. 
34 people here. Wow. Thank you, people. You crochet. I, I crocheted one baby blanket when I was pregnant with my son. And that was it. I decided, nope, that's not my thing. And this is also fabric that's got, you know, it was from upholstery book. So it's got the little staple marks there. Don't care. I don't care. Um, we'll put it in the center of here somewhere. And I'm not even going to worry about little holes like that because they can be covered up with the little pieces. Gail says, I plan on making knitted hats with some of my yarn and donating them. Sharon says, can't, can't decide how I want one, want to make one. I've thought about it a lot. I want all the different sizes. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a little one, but I realized I don't really know what I would do with the stuff that I used on it. I've used it a couple times, but it's like, eh, it doesn't get me all excited. Now this is really hard for me people to have like these straight edges like this. So I really have to just keep remembering this is just the beginning, but I don't like all these big pieces. If we are watching thumbs up more likes says Terry and Fiona. Thank you. Sharon wants to know, has anyone tried Tunzian crochet? I really love it. I do not know what that is. Let's see. It's working up here. Barbara says, I just bought myself one of those long crochet hooks yesterday. Haven't gone to the tutorial yet. Oh, interesting. Danielle says, I get more instant gratification uh, when I crochet. I couldn't totally get into knitting. Gail says, yes, Sharon, I've tried it, made a few things. So it's with a really long crochet hook. Is that what I understand? I think I've heard the phrase, but okay, wait a minute. Gail says it's pronounced Tunisian. Tunisian. Okay, thank you. Still don't know what it is. Somebody tell me. Tell me about it. What is it? I'm not crazy about some of these reddish kind of things in here, but I'm going to make myself leave it. Oh, how did you send the link? Why don't you just post the link here in the chat, Paul, and then Terry can grab it and put you on the master list. Just post it right here in the chat. Makes a rather thicker piece. Oh, interesting. Joan, yes, a fabric master board. Basically, I'm making a base fabric that I can then do things to because Carol says she loves doing that. Wait a minute. Um, Calico. Hi, Kathy Cowell. Happy to have you join us. Barbara says, I did that kind of crochet in 1970 or so and had two and a half panels done when I left my marriage and the Afghan hook and all the yarn in a box of keepers, which ex-husband gave to Goodwill. Oh, dear. Sort of a cross between knitting and crochet. Oh, I'll have to go check it out. You crochet a whole row at a time instead of individual stitches. Okay. The problem with to Nishin for me is it seems harder to tear out if I have to. Ah. Hey, Kathy. Happy to see you pop in. We will take pop-ins whenever we can. Uh, Terry put a link up about that kind of stitching. Terry, Paul is trying to get his website posted so we can give him some feedback. because he, he did a bunch of changes after talking to some web designers. Yeah, Ch Terry is the pro admin. Isn't that the truth? She is freaking amazing. And Terry, please post your shop so people can go check it out for um, Fussy Cut Ephemera, all ready for you to use. And her beautiful earrings. Oh my goodness, she's got the most beautiful earrings. I don't know, are they in the shop? Are they only for your in-person stuff? No, they won't show, but it's always one of those um, 
those things that I have to remind myself is that this is just a base layer. You know, it just a um, ton of YouTube videos on it. Yeah. I'd like to get Paul's link, though, um, up there so that he can get some feedback. Make sure you post it in the group, Paul, because we can definitely go look at it there. But I know you'd like to get some tonight. There is Terry's shop. I'm going to go check it out. Uh, if you are doing one of these boards, fabric boards, and you're calling it a master board, please be careful if you're using um, fabric that uh, is still under copyright. If you're doing anything that was going to make a digital, people think of uh, master boards and making digitals, which is fine, but fabric gets copyrighted just like everything else. All right, I'm just going to This is light. I, have no, I didn't even look at the clock. YouTube was my teacher, said Sharon. All right, we need to get something light up there. Before I got rid of my scrapbook paper, I used to do this with scrapbook paper, and then I would stitch on it. Carol says, my mom taught me years ago. Nice. Just making them a little smaller. And my thought is, if I have an, an interesting piece of base fabric, then I've always got something I can stitch on. And because we are getting into fire season, I'm starting to think about, you know, what, um, to cut this, what I would pack to take with me if we have to evacuate, because that is unfortunately something we need to keep in mind. No, I just did, um, my scrapbook paper I did on index cards of several sizes, and then it made some really nice patchwork um, journal cards or pockets, you know, because it made it a little sturdier, a little more interesting. What's the wow for, Gail? What's the wow? Uh. So yeah, thinking about potential evacuations is not fun. And it would be different than last year. I was not as much into fire, fire season. Yes, that's it's scary times. I don't like it. Last year, I did not think about things like um, packing much fabric. I had only packed my, um, the one time we packed to evacuate, we didn't have to, but we packed for it. I only packed uh, fabric I had dyed. And this time I know it would be very different. Where's my corduroy? Did I not put... Well, heck, I don't even see my corduroy fabric. Let's fix that. Now, he had a... <clears throat> Paul, did you have... You have a website, not your Etsy. I don't think, um, let's see. Becky on Aunt B's Creations is doing tutorials on Tunisian right now. Nice. Allison says, I collage fabric pieces and stitch to card for tags, etc. Yep. Yeah, fire season is just, it's its scary times. Yeah, it's not his Etsy. He's, he's done a website, but I don't know. It might be Paul Ellis Photography. I'm not sure. I know his connection is not always easy for him. 
Lori says, I think if you did have to evacuate, stitching would help the nerves while you're waiting to get back home. Yes, that's exactly it. And I, um, you have to think about things like that because we would be going to my in-laws and, you know, the two of us and a big dog in the spare bedroom. And it would be something, yeah, it would just be something, a small place to have to figure it out. So I want to have a few projects that are in process that I can always know that I can grab. And, you know, this time I would be taking all my dyed fabrics and all my threads. Fiona says, I've been watching the water problems regarding the Colorado River. And I didn't realize how many people, how many millions of people relied on it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Anne says, Danielle, my brother had to evacuate 12 animals. Wow. Dixie said, during Hurricane Harvey, I had to evacuate via FEMA boat, had to have a carrier for every animal. I had to go back for two cats. Oh, wow. That, yeah. When I lived in Louisiana, I lived in New Orleans. I would, that was one of the things I was very much afraid of. All right. I still see green, so we need to keep adding. Um, Gail said, of course, we don't get much warning here in the Midwest if a tornado hits. Yeah, boom, right out of nowhere. Hey, Karen, you are late, but that's okay. We are happy to see your name pop up on the screen. I am just collaging bits of fabric that I can then stitch down and do things to, making a base fabric. Karen says, hello from Texas. Yeah, I think tornadoes, well, and we don't get any warning if there's an earthquake, you know, here in California. They just come out of nowhere. A well, little Miss Perfectionist keeps trying to climb out of the trunk, and I just keep telling her to take a hike because... I don't want to listen to her today. I don't ever want to listen to her, but today I really don't want to listen to her. Let's see. Yes, a stitch and go bag. Yep. <clears throat> We've got all our important papers, at least in one easy to grab thing. You know, it all depends on how much time you get notified. Uh, last year, I'm trying not to worry about the really big or really little places. Uh, last year, we were able to get packed up and have the cars packed. Like we went ahead and packed our clothes for a couple weeks and because we had enough. So we grabbed suitcases and packed our clothes and I packed the studio and we packed everything, you know, in the cars um, in case we had to go. And we ended up being the only part of town that did not evacuate because of where we're located and where the fire was located. That was the big issue at the time. Um, but we've learned, you know, like I have these empty plastic tubs that if we have time to pack, you know, I know those will fit in my car and I know how many of them will fit where. <clears throat> Kathy said, just got a severe thunderstorm warning while we were talking about the weather. Oh, I'm in the Santa Cruz mountains in California, Karen. Paul, what is, just paste in the chat here. Just paste your website in the chat, and then Terry can grab it and add it to the list. I haven't seen it show up in the chat at all. All right, let's see. We are we're getting there. The other thing you can do if you've done this with um, glue stick and you want to make it stick a little more, you can run an iron over it a little bit after you do this. But I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> but if you just... Pa oh, paste it without... Just paste the name, um, Paul. Paste the name. Uh, Mouse says, I don't think non-mods can paste links. And I can't easily make you a mod to do that. Just paste the name of your website without the HTTPS. And the www. That's thank you, Mouse. I totally forgot about that. I'm sorry, Paul. Danielle, yes, we can all see you, or I can see you. She 
Sharon says, I don't, Lori. We usually visit family and I'm always busy social, too busy socializing to craft. Mind you, we play a lot of games and jigsaw puzzles when we're together, so I'm never bored. Paul, I'm sorry. So frustrating. I did not even think about that and that now that they've changed it. Yeah, just you have to post it without the HTTPS www. Just the name of the website so then Terry can go find it. I can't easily get over to make somebody else a mod. So if you can do that part, Danielle, that would help. Let's see, we're getting just a little bit of green left. What do I want on this side? It's, it still looks like a hot mess to me. I have a trouble with this kind of thing, but I'm going to hope that it's all going to come together. It's kind of like a crazy quilt, but thank you, Fiona. She says it's coming together. Trusting your instincts works. We'll see. Um, it's hard when you're not like, oh my gosh, I just absolutely love this. And you just have to, yeah, you just have to trust your instincts are going to bring it all together. All right, let's see. Can do some little pieces. What I was gonna do, I was gonna do was basting stitches to hold it down, but I don't think I'm gonna do that now. Now I think I'm just going to literally um, start stitching together. Yes, it'll be for embroidery work. And I'm thinking what'll happen is <clears throat> I'm gonna stay in the browns, but I will grab some of my fibers and I will start couching on there. It's just gonna be very abstract. It's, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a doodle cloth. If you haven't seen the doodle cloth, um, look for Paul Ellis Photography. There we go. And Paul, make sure you post it over in the group or I'll post it after um, I get off of here and tell people you'd like some feedback. He's trying to um, amp up his site. Terry, bless your heart. Terry got it. I think. I'm gonna. Yep. Fiona says, I like the balance of light, mid, and dark. Plenty to contrast when stitching. Yeah. You know, it's always a challenge here, Danielle. And I probably need to make a couple more people admins for this kind of a thing. So poor Terry gets a chance to enjoy some of the line. Nope, that's not it, he says. So, Danielle, I didn't see what you... Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to just take a minute and grab it. Uh, Paul Ellis Photography. Bear with me, folks. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, well, I found your Google thing. All right, we need to have a thing, Paul, about updating your Google. Um, all right, let's come over here and keep bearing with me here. Hold on, we're going to get there. Uh, well, no, I can't. Paul, it's not coming up easily. Wow.
Paul is in South Africa. Um, I can find his YouTube channel easily. I can find his Facebook group easily. So Paul, you need to update so that your website goes to all those other places if you haven't thought about doing that already. Sue wants to know, Paul, are you in Port Shepstone? Let's see here. Let's try. I'm going to try one more thing. Is it a dot com, Paul, or something else? And are there any spaces in between things? Yeah, because I can't find the other stuff either. Yeah, the website's not listed on. Oh, Sue found it. Okay, Sue, can you tell us what all the phrases are to put in there minus the um, URL stuff? Hey, Margaret, good morning. You're up early today. My glue is drying up here, I think. You forgot it was Thursday. Yeah, this this whole having friends on the other side of the world. My goodness. All right, let's see. I got a few spots left to fill. Just Didi says Paul's photography came right up for me. He is an amazing photographer. I just absolutely love his work. And so I'm I'm sorry that I'm not helpful right now. It's hard when I'm on camera too. <laughs> what, Paul? <laughs> I should have just taken the time and gone over and made you to you gone over to YouTube and made you a um admin and then you could paste it yourself. Uh, let's see here. Ellis dash photos.com. Hey, Diane, I was just thinking about you this morning. Terry posted something. Um, Ellis hyphen photos.com. Paul, is that you? Did we find you? Thank you, Terry, for being the admin with the most dedication to making sure we can all connect. I'm so grateful for you. All right, I love those threads. So let's see if we can leave that out. Did Terry get it? Was that right? All right, Terry got it. Awesome sauce. All right. There it is. There is Paul's link. And you guys can go check out his beautiful photos. And then Paul, let us know what you wanted. You wanted some feedback on the website since you've been playing with it. <laughs> she is a rock star. Yeah, you can click on the link in the chat. Yep. We just went through some hoops. <laughs> Terry, you are amazing. Okay, for that, I hope somebody needs some ephemera and they go over to Terry's shop and go shopping because she's so fabulous. Paul says, I'm just different. Yeah, well, let me tell you, Paul is different in the very best way. I adore him. I absolutely adore him and Melissa, his daughter. And the dog. Oh, my goodness, whose name is totally, I've totally forgot but it's got the cutest face. But gosh, Paul, I can't even think that. We've known each other for a long time. They are beautiful photos. Okay, look at here. I need a little bit more brown. I got some spots that need some filling. Here's another shade we can do. No, Paul is not part of my business group. I ought to tell him about it though, huh? I work with a business coach, and Sharon does too, um, by the name of Lennon Bone at StopTheStarvingArtist.com. And if anybody wants 
to go check it out. He's got a lot of free stuff on his website about growing, oh, that's too close to that color, growing your business. And we would love to have more people join us. Uh, he's got a lot of the free stuff that's available now, and then he opens up for the, um, the more intense groups every few months. Well, those are close to the same color, but enough different that I'm going to go with it. Yeah, this is this has got so many straight edges that it is really um, it's really hard for me, and I have to really let myself know it's okay. Let's see what else do I have over here. I really don't want to do the reds. I could put this on here now, but I think it's a little too. <clears throat> ah, Paul C. Terry's comment. She said, please check out this site. It has a photo of your face. So it may not be something that you want out there. Maybe something you have to follow up on. Really just want to get the green covered. Yeah, his photos are great. So what did you want to know about the website, Paul? If everything was working right, if everything looked good, let us know what you want feedback on. This is a really thin lining, but I think. Oh, um, missed having you here too, Diane. I'm basically making a master back. They call them a fabric master board, I guess, is what they've been calling it here. But for me, it's a background fabric. Uh, so that I can use up some of these scraps, break a little bit of a slump, and then, um, oops, that's awful big there. And then I will stitch all these little pieces down and do some couching and just kind of play around with things. We'll see where it takes us. And so I suppose based on the size, I'm not doing a ton of journals lately, so it's probably going to be a wall hanging of some kind although it could be a really big journal. Oh, it thinks it's an article featuring him. Well, that's nice too. <clears throat> this is regular glue stick and I'm just going to be hand stitching. So I really don't think it's a, uh, it's a problem for me to stitch through it. I've used it a lot in the past. I have a fabric glue stick, but I usually save it for my nicer projects. Fabric jump off board, maybe. Yeah. Mouse says, you know how hard it is to remember all the different passwords. Sometimes I feel that way about my workplace evacuation plans, fire season, power outage, active shooter, earthquake, flash flood. Yeah. I have been putting all my passwords into a program called Bitwarden that my husband got us set up on and I'm not done yet, but it is getting there and it's going to be so much nicer not to have a gazillion passwords. Paul says, Terry, it has one of my YouTube videos on it. All right, let's tuck this guy under there. Just a few little spots, but I'm using the same one over and over again, so. This gray one right here, is this, this the one that's bothering you right here, Sharon? I know I'm, I have the same issue, but let's think about, you know, it's going to be covered with stitch. So maybe I can save it. <clears throat> COVID exposure. Yeah. You know, mouse, you're right. I mean, there's just all this stuff that we have to keep in mind. Middle left. This one here, here here. <laughs> I still have little bits of, yeah, because this over here is really light down here. So I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm going to try and not worry about it. They're not all exactly browns. 
Paul says, I feel so chuffed that this guy referred to my fine art videos. That's awesome. Colors look like fall. Yeah. And, you know, you see a lot of people do a monochromatic in um, neutrals. And I don't see a whole lot of them in other colors. And so I was thinking last night when I was not sleeping because I was thinking about not working, I was thinking about doing a series of things in monochrome, you know, the different monochromatic colors, like going through all my colors. But um, I decided that was biting off way more. It was good until I cut the one on the right. Is this the one we're talking about here? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to have to let it go. I really am. Yeah, that's covering up my little loose edges that I like. Okay, that one. Okay, gotcha. Well, let's see what we can do about that. I can't believe, though, that I'm using up all this brown. This is a little too gray. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take care of that in a minute cuz this one down here is bothering me cuz it's a lot out of tone, but and some of the reddish ones that got in there and you know, it's okay. It's all going to it's all going to work out in the end, right? That's what I'm telling myself. Even when you have, I mean, you could do, okay, you could take Let's grab what have I got here. All right. You could take this piece of material, cut it up into or tear it into all these different pieces and then stitch it back down. And just the action of stitching down those individual pieces is going to give you a different texture in the background. It's going to be all one color. You should try that. I could try that one of these days is you just, you know, tear these into little pieces. And if you don't want to do it by hand, you know, um, put it on some heat and bond and get it all down and then stitch over all the edges like you would a crazy quilt. Ah, it's no worries, Sharon. No worries. We're all friends here. Okay, here's a slightly different shade of brown. Because texture, um, one of my favorite pieces is that green one that I did that you guys freaked out when I, um, when I cut it. And it's one of my favorite pieces because of all the texture, you know, and then embroidering on top of the texture just gives you more texture and it just gets really exciting. This one I'm ticked off about because I, I used the glue side, but you know, no, I don't want that straight edge up. So I just have enough of the glue on there to hold everything in place so I can stitch. And I think this is what I'll be working on tonight while I am. Um, watch baseball. If I can get all the little pieces stitched down a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to work on stitching them all down nicely. Maybe I'll just do, oh, maybe I'll just do that. I'll grab a neutral thread and feather stitch all around everything. Sharon says, I love that kind of stitching where you have all different fabrics and stitch over the whole piece, which then unifies everything. It's kind of like adding gesso over the top for me. Yes. Lori says, fabric manipulation is endless and something I want to explore more. It's so much fun because you, you don't get attached to these early layers. Well, you have to not get attached to the early layers. Diane says, the craziness of collage, you cut up perfectly good pieces and glue it to perfectly good piece to make a perfectly good piece to cut up. Exactly. I know, we're bonkers, right? We're all bonkers. Sharon says, it was a theory I used with my Sunset Meadows journal cover when I created it, except it's machine sewn instead of hand sewn. Yeah, and I've done that with some pieces too. And I really, really like that. Um just once you, you know, get it all together, 
in some way so that it's down and then you can stitch over it. Uh, let's see, this guy can go over here. And I didn't worry about trying to cut a straight piece of felt because of course, as you stitch, your fabric's gonna kind of twist a little bit. I wanna get the green covered so then I can show you my, I brought a few, somewhere I brought a few other things out. Um, that's the same color. So let's do this over here. <clears throat> Some more corduroy. There's not much of it left. Sharon says my curtain fabric was my gesso layer, you know, and it's also um, the book text journals that I did last year, you know, where I collaged my journal cover base and then I collage with book text and then I collaged with sheer fabric over the top of it. And then I stitched. I just stitched that with the machine. Good point, Sue. She says, but whether we're cutting up perfectly good paper or fabric and then gluing it or sewing it back together, we're exercising our personal creativity using our own voice. Exactly. And it's a nice block breaker doing something like this. You know, it's got my brain going, thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do, how I want to use certain things. Um, Use another little bit of light up here. All right, let's, I think. Danielle says, if you use that water soluble interfacing, you add all your bits to sew in place and then dip into water and soluble dissolves it away. Yes. And it's a lot of fun to do something like that. You can get some really great effects. Um, Sylvie So on Instagram and on Facebook, I guess, uh, does beautiful nature pieces like that, that I just absolutely love. So it's a little shiny, but I'm going to let it go. All right. There's a little bit of green popping up here. I don't have to cover it, but I'm going to cover it. It's wonderful. Um, it's also great for making the uh, fabric bowls where you can use all your little thread bits. This is good. You guys are really helping me kind of get my brain unstuck here. All right. I think, I think that looks pretty good. I think everything is mostly covered. Now... Of course, I cleaned off the desk and <clears throat> so I mean, you could take scraps of lace. You know, you could take a big piece of lace. You could take a piece of um, cream colored lace over the whole thing. You could cut, I'm just going to cut a little bit of this just to give you an idea. The, it turns out the green felt was bugging me, and Oh, that's too funny. So, I mean, you could start doing lace all over the top of this before you stitch everything down. That would be one thing you could do. You could, let's see, what do I have here? You could take cheesecloth. And you could just take a big piece of cheesecloth that's in the same color family and stitch over the whole thing. So you're still going to see some of that. It's going to hold down your stitches. Um, you could then start building up on top of here. What if you wanted to add pattern? So you could get some pattern fabrics. But what I'm going to end up doing is getting all my little bits and I brought them out here and then I guess I moved them. Ugh. Yeah, the cheesecloth is great because you can see right through it. And I mean, you could do it also in little bits. I mean, what if, let's take a little bit here. Yeah, I think the lace could be interesting. Um, it's kind of in that same, where's the pieces that I cut? It's in that same family. 
Um, this is like a netting that's kind of sheer. So you could start grabbing all the little pieces. Tool, absolutely. Tool would work. And the thing with something, anything like this is you can, you know, take your cheesecloth, of course, and make some holes. And so then when you put it down, I can bring you down a little bit more now. Then you bring it down and you can have part of the fabric showing through. You could, what else have we got here? This is black, but so this netting, you know, you could um, make clusters in place. Those little bits of sari ribbon that we always have left over after we've, you know, done something. They make really great things to go over the, the seams. Barbara says, I use the tool to put on top of thread painting landscapes on quilts. Fun with all of that. Yeah, I've got some um, things that I've done like that too. Here's some uh, organza. It's the wrong color, but see how you have that same see-through effect. So imagine if this was the light color. And again, you could... The extra yard could be used on top for texture. Yeah, there's just, there's so much you can do once you get this base down. And, you know, maybe you just cut pieces, yarn. We were talking about using up yarn. What else is over here? I cleaned off my desk, kind of, sort of. Um, you could treat it like one big cluster. There's the sticks. I figured those would come in later. Anything with a slight transparency to it, but... I really kind of like this lace. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, this is not a very big piece. So you can see the color, the, the see-through. Burlap would be an interesting thing. That would be a completely different look. Or you can use gauze too. Yes, gauze is great. Or you can just start to build up another layer with just fibers. What if you did that? What if you just, these are just loose fibers that are on my desk, okay? What if you stayed within that color family? Whoops. You can also use fine black veiling. Yes, netting. Um, you don't have to stay with fabric. What about the uh, nets that a lot of fruits and vegetables come in, the plastic netting? And then you can take a heat torch to it. So you could, I wouldn't use this one's too light, but you could absolutely take all your little tiny scraps. Yeah, I tea dye um, da coffee, tough. Danielle says, I tea dye coffee, I tea coffee dye hospital gauze. And I do that too. I like it because I have a bunch of the gauze for um, plaster work and it's cheap and you can get it in a lot of varying widths. What else is over here? I'm trying to think anything else that's in these colors. Sharon says, yes, I was thinking about fibers. I'm in my, your head again. I know we share a brain, Sharon, we share a brain. So I don't like going with the light, but uh, and okay, what if you weren't using the heavy fibers? What if, I love that. Is there anything better than a sentence that starts with the phrase, what if, you know, the possibilities are endless. Okay. This is a thread I wouldn't be using on the machine. Um, so what if you just had all your loose threads and as you were stitching down your edges, you just use the very fine threads. Barbara says, I use black tool a lot for covering threads and pieces like that. Yeah. And the black gives you a really great shadow effect. I wish I brought more of my tool out, but let's see what else is over here. Ah. Uh, okay. What if you wanted to go a completely different way and said, okay, this is just my base. And then you could put something over the top of it like this. 
The other thing is just because this is fabric doesn't mean you can't put paper on top of it and stitch the paper on top of it. So you can, I don't have any, oh, wait a minute, maybe I do. Ha ha, I do have something. All right, this is deli paper. This is kind of, let's see if I've got anything that's any lighter. <clears throat> deli paper that's got some jelly printing on it. <laughs> Terry, I love it. She says, you're thinking up good stuff for someone with a creativity block. You know, I think it's being here with you guys. You guys do it for me. Let's grab something that's not quite so dark. Okay, so here's deli paper that doesn't have much on it. So what if you did just a light wash on it? And then you could stitch this to it. And you didn't have to stitch all of it. You just take part of it. You know, you can combine it with, I don't know what these things are that are down here. <laughs> Gail says, good point, Terry. Sharon says, I hear a definite pep in Susan's voice. I love it. Yeah. Bye, Anne. I'm glad you were able to hang with us for a little bit. Yes, I just needed a live audience. See, I need you guys. All right, that's kind of in the color family, but, you know, you could you could build things up. You could build things up. All right. I need to think about what I'm going to do next on this. And I think when I'm looking at this, I really, I'm thinking I am going to take some browns. Probably, I'm going to probably, hmm. I'm going to see if I have a variegated that I like with it. Or maybe I want to use up some of this. Oh, this would be good. I want to use up this. We all need each other, says Terry. That is why we gather here. Absolutely. Don't think too hard. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, more like a crocheted cotton. It's very, um, uh, what do you call it? Merchant Merchandised? Mer I'm not sure how to pronounce that correctly. So it's got a little bit more of a shine. It, it doesn't quite, um, it's not quite the same as a pearl cotton or as an embroidery floss. But I bought a bunch of it and because it works really well for wrapping sticks. But it's not my favorite thing to use anymore. So I'm thinking maybe, I think I have some that's a little bit um, darker. But if I don't, I might use this and just feather stitch over the entire, all the edges. Sharon says, I'm wondering about twisted paper in your beautiful dyed papers, kind of like cordage. I have made paper cordage. Um, in fact, I just had it out the other day. Uh, you can absolutely make cordage out of paper. Bits of dictionary pages would be cool. Absolutely. Especially those old dictionary papers. You know, if you, okay, you have this like this. So go ahead and take your matte medium out and do collage over this. Melody Maid, hi, welcome. So happy to have you here. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the tail end of my time, but happy to have you join us. I usually, I'm here from 12 to 1.30 my time, and we're about 1.20. Paper string, raffia, yeah. So I'm not sure, what do you think about feather stitch in this color? over all my loose edges? Or do you think I should stay? Is Fiona still here? Fiona's my color conscience. Or, let's see, I'll bring you guys down a little closer. Ah, Pacific time, yes, I'm in California. But I'm here every week, every Wednesday. All right, guys, what do you think? Let's put them in order. The first one is what I'm thinking is I might have one that's a darker brown. Oh, you're in Oregon. Okay, so we're at the same time zone. We are in the same time zone. Or I could mix it up. How much do I want the stitching to stand out? That is a good question, Sue. I think a feather stitch... I always think of it as kind of a background because it's flat enough 
that then you can do other stitching on top of it. I do that a lot. I like to use a feather stip stitch as a background. So, um, hmm. So yeah, if I use the lighter, several threads together, I'm going to see, I might have, I, I, well, I might, there's no bite about it. Let's see. You guys know I have hundreds. You like the top one? You like the, the darker ones? Hey, Lorna. Sharon says, I always prefer a contrasting thread for a pop, but it depends on what my vision. What you talking about vision, Sharon? How long did we talk last night? <laughs> <laughs> too funny let's see these are all oh, these are all my purples and greens so they're not going to work yeah but i have lots of browns let's see is there anything even close yeah i'm not thinking i want to do a variegated so i have a darker brown and i'm thinking i'm since this is primarily dark yeah it's like sharon do you know me vision <laughs> So I think maybe I will do a darker. I've got something a lot darker than the these. I'll do the darker and just kind of let that be a background. You like the golden tone in the middle? See, and if if I did this with just a single strand, yeah, maybe two can't two together. But I'm on a roll now, yeah. And then I'm gonna crash, right? I'm gonna go off camera and then I'm gonna go. Ah. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. I could mix a couple with this so i would grab floss rather than the two pearls and i don't know how much you guys can see a blend and i might just um i might just grab a few different brown flosses because there's a lot a lot of stitching to be done here messy is diane no crashing. Once I have lift off, you'll fly. I don't know. I'll probably go make some more TikTok videos. <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm going to do just maybe a single strand of floss because then it's going to be, yeah, back to committee art. Yep. Um, Cause see, okay. When I bring the fibers on here, this is a good way of judging. See, I think if we, if we go more into the brown tones, I like that. Because I think I want to do the pop with other stitching. So I think, and then I might alternate. We'll see. We'll see how I do later today. But that's that's where I am. And, you know, I suggest you guys give it a try, you know, with your scraps. Here's my other piece that I'm going to work on. And it's going to be different. <coughs> I'll tell you about it. Ugh. So this one is twice as big, probably a little bit more, more like three times as big as this one. And I cut a sheet. I have a piece of felt the same size, but I cut a sheet first. And on this one, I'm going to lay the browns all over it. And it's not going to, I'm not going to worry about what size the squares are. I'm not going to worry about trying to make them small like this one. And I am going to just do basting stitches. You guys might remember me doing something like this in the past. And then I'm going to cut it apart and throw it in the washing machine and the dryer and let it go through the dryer a few times and get those frayed edges. And then the cut pieces, then I will sew to a piece of um, felt. So we'll see. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I will be working on this probably in between the lives just because, just because, right? Because that's why I do all of my stuff, right? It's all just because. <laughs> you guys have been awesome for helping me work through a block. Um, if nothing else, my Wednesday block is solved. I'm not so sure about the rest of the time, but Lori says, I'm currently doing several pieces like this in different denims, bleach, dyed, worn, et cetera. Oh, beautiful. Yes, just because. Absolutely. We're going to do it all just because it makes us happy to do it, right? 
All right, everybody. Um, if you haven't already checked out Paul's awesome website, please do. If you haven't gone over and checked out Terry's Etsy shop, please do. As a thank you, if you bought from her before, make sure you leave a review so that she gets some nice credit um, for being such a fabulous moderator for us over here. I am so grateful to every one of you. 43 eyes on the camera today. Thank you. I appreciate your likes. And ah, Melody, that's sweet for the super sticker. Thank you so much. So kind. You guys are all wonderfully supportive of one another. And Terry, I cannot say thank you enough for going out and missing out on the chat and grabbing all those links for us. She says, we're here because we love you. I appreciate it. Hugs all around. Thank you guys so much. See you in the Facebook group and uh, looking forward to having a good stitching kind of week. All right. Good star review. Five ladies, four stars are hard, according to Etsy. Yes, they are. Paul, glad you were able to stay up and hang with us tonight. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye-bye until next week.